Are you ready? I'm in heaven right now. Thank you. Feels good. <laughs> it's recording. We're so grateful to be here. Um, before we get started with some music tonight, we just wanted to kind of all build a collective um, coherence with each other. So just invite you for a moment to find a comfortable position. Relax your body and close your eyes for a moment. Taking the biggest breath you've taken all day. And hold deeper. And release. Dropping into this moment. Arriving completely into this moment. This moment. Taking another deep breath. Hold. Deeper. And release. Releasing all tension in the body. Arriving even more completely into this moment, this moment. Filling ourselves from gratitude. Gratitude for this moment, to be together, listening to music, One more deep breath, all the way in. And release. Just 
opportunity to share music with this community. I just wanted to introduce this incredible group of artists here. On my left, we have Sean Rodman. On my left is David Block. On my left is Kat Factor. On my left, the great Danny Misengo. And on my right, <laughs> the great Misengo. <laughs>
But there's some color in her face now Like the blossom of a moonflower Grows wild up the coastline Just a few miles from here While most things are best unsaid Brother, she ain't one of them Her loving has a violence And that's how you know it's good Try to pin it down on a parchment paper She can set your house on fire But if you came here with the thought you'd break her I think you need to change your mind If she just came
This is a, an early song that uh, Dave and I wrote together before we kind of moved out of the city to start doing this. Uh, it's a big inspiration for, uh, for what became 2030, I think.
Fox. I 
I'll tell you a story You can decide if you wanna have it If you wanna have it There's nothing in the way There's nothing in the way There's nothing Coast.
Thank you guys so much for going on this adventure with us. It's such an honor to share music with this community. Uh, Ram Dass has been such an incredibly powerful teacher for, for all of us, and we're, we're so honored to, to be able to share music and to be together. And this has been such an incredibly challenging time for humanity. And uh, music has been such a powerful unifying force and such a, a powerful medicine for all of us. And um, we're really, really honored to, to share the music with you. So this last song um, is from our from our new album called 2030. It's a song called Marigold. Yeah, Danny wrote this song and uh, showed it to Mel and I actually in New Year's New Year's morning was it 2019 20? 20? Twenty beginning of 2020. Beginning of 2020. Yeah, and we just cried listening to this song, and uh, the title of the album is kind of based on this track, Marigold.
was merry go. Shiva. Shiva for being here. Thank you, RD. Thank you, Casey, <laughs> for shooting for us and being here today. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Gone Gone Beyond, for making the finale of the Soul Land music series this season all the more special and and beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Shiva. <laughs> Ooh, uh, I, I just witnessed the performance of right here on this couch, so I'm, I'm pretty uh, overwhelmed with emotion and sitting in this beautiful afterglow. And in the conclusion, where we wind up is Marigold. And uh, thank you for performing it tonight in uh, the finale of, of the music uh there's a well what would you like to say about <laughs> the conclusion of the album um i remember when we we started learning the song because it's a, yeah, once again us on one of those downloads from from danny and uh it's so interesting when somebody else writes a song and then you learn the song and uh it like immediately, if immediately felt like my song, <laughs> and it was so deep, and all the words of some of the song made sense to me. Like the, what the, the narrative of the song made so much sense to me, because uh, I hope I see you in the year twenty thirty, just as pretty um, as it was when you was a kid, and I have my two daughters. But I, at that time, I also had my mom, that was um, in her uh, late stages. And it made so much so much sense to have that kind of like uh, parallel reality for myself through the song, like seeing my, like thinking about the energy of my daughters growing up and the energy of my mom passing, uh, on. passing on, right? That's, and that was an interesting thing about oh, was it? yeah, uh, just in writing the song to have those. All of that was in mind, actually. Like I, I was writing a love song. But David had called me and was like, um, was that a summit? We had, we had played um, a, well, I'll let him talk about, but like the UN. And it was all about, you know, these 2030 was the year that they sort of set the for. Sustainable development goals. Sustainable development goals. And so he had called and said that he was like uh, a song for 2030, you know, like, like a song for Mother Earth. And then Mel's mom was, you know, in her late stages. And, and so honestly, I really, the trick was I wanted words that meant all three of those things. Like if I was to write a love song to Mother Earth, a love song to my love, or, or a song for Mel to his mom, but I only had one set of words to use, like what would those words be kind of thing, you know? Yeah, and... Um you know, I think every song that every time we make anything, we have we, there's an opportunity, right? Whether we choose to take that opportunity or to like just you know make something and just think and not define our why, um, you know that's that's our choice, right? We have that choice. We can, I mean, and everyone has a why, but um, I've always felt that when you put 
certain intention into your work, it changes the quality of your work. And depending on that intention, it will change the, that will, how it will change the, the quality of that work. Um, and we were talking a lot about, you know, why we write songs. What is the purpose of our songs? Danny was writing this. He said this love song. I was like, let's let's write a love song. Let's write a love song for the earth. And he was already halfway into the song. And so it's so beautiful how you know different people can take different meanings of it. It's so easy to think that we we know what we're we know what we're doing and we know, <laughs> when we know where we're going. Um, but this whole band has just been such an incredible illustration that. Of, of surrender, you know, and of, of letting the great organizational forces of nature and the universe work through us, in, 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 you know, instead of trying to control our creativity and claim our creativity, is, instead of being a human doing, we're allowing ourselves to be a human being. Um, and I think that it's surrendering and allowing this music to unfold, not saying like, we're going to go in and record an album. That's not what we did, right? We're going to just be creatives, allow art to happen, to be a happening. We are ha- we're a verb, not a noun, right? And, you know, and- I was just thinking of the lyric, like in Marigold, like, and after all the trouble of a thunderstorm, the sun came out again and it was marigold, you know? And it's like, that's exactly the feeling I was having even with Riptide. And it's like all throughout the album of just like the tension and release, you know, the dark and the light, you know, the letting go and the birthing anew. It's like, this is to me, the energy of the album is that ebb and flow. It is the tension and release. And um, and I I really don't feel like we're responsible for the music we create. You know, we show up to do the work so that we're capable of of being utilized for the energy for the muse that exists in the room. There's so many lyrics that you think of. You're just like, oh, I could repeat that to myself over and over again. Like, you know, like even with like, the, there's nothing in the way. There's nothing in the way. There's nothing in the way. Like I, as I'm singing another earth, I'm telling myself that's like the moment of the song that I connect with so deeply too. Um, and you know, I feel like a lot of the statements that we make lyrically are really things that are just like help us to gain acceptance with this humanness, you know, that we're all living in, which comes with the whole spectrum of realities and emotions and um, trials and tribulations and pain and suffering and also love and joy and light and bliss. And um, so this album to me is a reflection of all of those things. You know, it is the deep pain and suffering. It is the death and the rebirth. It's the tension and release, you know. Um, and that, and, I, and I agree that the end of the album does encapsulate that that feeling very well. Yeah, that's the unbearable lightness of being. You know, like it's it's sort of just the isness, the what it what it feels like to be alive at the moment that we're downloading the song, you know, that when we're writing the song, like what does like you said, like that you came in the room and the song Canyon sounds like this room. It sounds like you know, sitting cross-legged on pillows, you know, in this room with frogs outside. And, like, I think... And I think that's all really it is, is, like, recording what what is happening when you're alive, you know? Like, and, 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 and kind of reflecting it back to everybody so they can see themselves, you know, in all of their beauty and... and not so beautiful things, you know, <laughs> and and I think that that's like the goal, you know, when we're making a song is just to like really capture the, the moment, the moment, yeah. the moment. Yeah, this moment. That's it. And I feel I feel like uh, every one of us has that kind of like sense of subtleties, and there's like this. Uh, common place for all of us to find that place of nothingness and everythingness at the same time when we create something like I value that so much and I really appreciate that from all of you guys because I'm a drummer I'm a, like a classical musician trained musician and I've been sharing music like creative moments and 
<clears throat> professional musical environments with so many people throughout my life, and it's such a unique and 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 valuable um, thing to have to be able to go to this place of creation in which what's important is not what sh what you're doing or what or how people perceive you, but the creation itself and what it's going to do give out to the world, how it's going to heal people's lives. And to be able to be together in that same um, way of expression is incredible. It's such a gift for, for me and I think for each one of us. And it makes our work so much more powerful when we deliver it to, to the rest of the world. Wow. Well, exquisitely <laughs> articulated from, from each band member. Congratulations on one, completing the album, giving it to the world, and now completing your first tour. <laughs> it, was it went a, so well, didn't it? It went so well. It, it was. Thank you, Trevor Hall. Yeah. Thank you, Trevor Hall. Yeah. And thanks, RD. Thank you. And thanks, RD. Sean Rodman. Thank you, Sean. Sean yeah, I don't know if you want to add anything. Way too much. <laughs> he's, a, he's a talker. But, 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 before we, before we, we get out of here, uh, anything that anybody in the group who has been affected by the work of Ram Dass and influenced by that in any way, please please feel free to just come from your heart and say what, whatever. Because yeah. the audience is uh, up for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well... Um, yeah, I met I met Ram Dass, God, I don't know, eight eight or so years ago. I was living in Maui, and my friend Vishnu Vishnu Das uh, was was helping you know take care of him and working with him, and and also going over and and singing and and just being a big a big part of that community. And um, I'd say just two quick stories. This was the first time I met him. I um, I had been up all night. Might have been some psychedelics involved, and uh, I, I'm in the morning. I hadn't slept, and he he comes in, and they, they wheel him in. There's thunderstorm outside, and he has just like the biggest radiant smile I've ever seen in my life. He's like, like you know how his smile is, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sitting like you know. Th four feet from him and he's sitting there in his chair and there's a bunch of people behind me and I'm just like sitting there and um, he goes takes a microphone he has the microphone and he uh, he this is post to stroke obviously and he says in this moment and 30 seconds goes by and everyone's like on the edge of their seat and I'm just like sitting there in front and then he says again in this moment this goes on for like five or six minutes most other people are sitting there being like in this moment what? in this moment what? in this moment what? and I sit there and I have this, and I have this realization that's the whole thing that's the whole teaching it's just this moment. That was the whole teaching. There's no other thing. There's no advanced course. That's the whole deal. It's this moment. And um, that was the beginning of my journey with him. And then when he passed away, um, I had this very strange experience where, you know, he, he tells all these stories about his friend Emmanuel. And he, you know, he says, uh, you know, everyone has such a hard time with Emmanuel just because he doesn't have a body. You know, he's a disembodied mm. being. Um, but he was obviously a very dear friend and a great teacher for for Ram Dass. And um, and when when he died, you know, and he all, Ram Dass would always tell the story about the Maharishi when he was leaving, and they're like, "Please don't go, please." He's like, "I'm just dropping my body. Like you're welcome. I'm going to be everywhere now." And and that felt really very real for me. I felt like he kind of incarnated, like part of him, like came into my my soul. And f from the moment he passed away, I, would, I was listening to him maybe an hour or two every single day. And he would come to me in these different forms of like people who would be aggravating me. And then he would be like, ha ha, I gotcha. You know, or people when I would lose my temper, it would be like, here you go. And 
the, his, the, the idea of love, only two things that we have to do in our life. Love everyone and tell the truth. Um, and his realization, you know, the truth is I don't love everyone. That's, that's like my great, the great, my big teaching for me right now um, of dealing with the world, which is full of so much suffering. It's like, how do we, how do I love the people who are the oppressors? How do I love the people who are doing um, and causing so many injustices? You know, how do I put those horrible people on my altar? And um, he's become my, you know, my greatest, my greatest teacher, you know, and um, maybe it's like the silly Jewish wisdom and being, and also being Jewish and, and um, that just feels so identified with, with him as a teacher and it feels so familiar and so comfortable to, to learn such incredible deep wisdom, but from someone who never really claimed to be like an enlightened being. He was always so connected to his humanity. You know, he's like, oh, you know, there you are, like silly pervert again, or there, you know, like you can come in for tea, but you're not welcome to stay. Um, and it's just given me so much permission to be on my spiritual path and to to not to not need to be perfect, you know, and to just like that the journey is the destination that we're constantly unfolding. We are happening. All, we're just walking each other home, you know, like all these incredible teachings um, are the most important teachings I've, I've ever encountered really. Um, and they inform me every moment of every single day and um, help me in becoming the most incredible version of mm -hmm. myself that that's possible. So when I, when, when you guys called and asked if we wanted to do this, I cried uh, because um, cause I know it's like he's still there, you know, and he's, in, he's informing all of my life all the time, all the music, every time I lose my temper, every time I have a great big win, he's like kind of there championing all of us um, to just be here in this moment, you know, this moment, this is it. That's all we have. Um, yeah, so we're so grateful for you. I know he's affected everyone. I don't know if yeah. everyone else wants to mention it, but... Um, he's, he's, he's um, you know, be here now, gone, gone beyond is like, you know, that's where I knew it from, my, you know, the page and be here now. And um, he's been a huge influence, huge influence. A big part of me... You know, I, I don't know, my spiritual development, I suppose. But I, I think that he also sort of, he has like a certain smirk about him, sort of like Alan Watts or Mark Twain, that sort of like makes you like really feel like he's not bullshit. You know, like he's like the good grandfather of like, you know, at least when I knew him, uh, you know, of him. And and uh, and he had a very, like, light kind of clownness to him. And, I, and it was like a beautiful, light sort of, I don't know, rainbow spirit. But no, he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's one of the greats. Would you like to say? I think one of, one of the things which I get, I get to know about him through the band, one of, one of the things that I have incorporated in my life is just... Uh, appreciation for for everything that comes and everything that happens and uh, um, I do a lot of effort and I travel a lot and I have my daughters I do so much stuff and, and I love like <clears throat> doing physical stuff I love martial arts and things like that and I have so, so there's so much some, sometimes intensity in my life but I, I try to welcome everything in a way that uh, it's like a gift for me because it's what's happening in the moment. So instead of going like, oh, I've been traveling for nine hours and now I'm so tired and so destroyed, I'm like, I'm so lucky to have been able to be to be here right now. Like I'm living the best of my life or when I have like whatever obligation that comes to me, like I have to, I don't know, arrive from a, from tour and go pick up my daughters and it's like, oh, I've been traveling for so long and now I have to go pick. Oh, it's so great now that I'm here, <laughs> I can go pick up my daughters. So everything has changed in the way I see my experiences through just appreciating the moment, right? 
Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, yes, and and I'm just so so grateful to for whatever my good karma was to travel me across time to arrive with Gone Gone Beyond in this <laughs> moment. This moment. It's a it's a exquisite moment, and your album. 2030 is a beneficial presence on this planet and I am so excited for so many more souls to discover that too so thank you for uh, taking some time in your preparation for your first tour in support of the album to share with the audience so deeply and, and so beautifully thank you thank you thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ram Das.